All right, guys and girls, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to DVD's Nuts and Popcorn. You are riding with Tight White. And I have, let me count them here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten movies from Goodwill. One from Walmart. Two from Half Price Books. I don't know where the other one's at. Two from eBay. And three movies from Dollar Tree. We've got a nice variety here, guys. I think I might have mixed, mixed one of them up. Well, I'll find it in a second here. Let's actually go over the Dollar Tree pickups first. Because these are all picked up today. Or actually, I'll show you everything that I picked up today. We'll go in that order. All right, so I upgraded my copy of VHS to a Blu-ray. Now I can get rid of my DVD copy. So a dollar for that. And then the next movie, this is not directed by Quentin Tarantino, but he's his name is associated with it. And it's one of those grindhouse movies like Death Proof would be another one, I think. I don't think he... Did he direct Death Proof? I can't remember now. But anyway... Not directed by him, but he's in association with it. So he's basically signing off on it, saying it's a good flick. This movie got very mixed rev reviews. Could be taking a risk with this one, but for a dollar, I'll try it out. I enjoyed Death Proof. I have not seen the other one. What's the other one called? Uh, I can't think of the note. There's another Grindhouse movie that he made in the 2000s that I can't think of. But anyway, this has, uh, I think this has David Carradine in it. It's got Michael Manson in it, or Madsen, and uh, who else? It was directed by Larry Bishop. Yeah, I figured I'd take a chance on it. Let me know in the comments below if you've, if you've seen that before. It's a biker movie. All right, I took a big risk with this one, but it's got Omar Epps in it. It's got Tom Atkins in it, which is a horror legend, man. Night of the Creeps, he had such great one-liners in it. You don't know who that is. Tom Atkins is right there. I don't know if that's picking up on camera. But anyway, the movie Trick, hard to pass up on it. It's got the slip for a dollar. It's supposed to be a slasher flick. It says, always choose treat. I don't know. It's a nice candy sh shelf, I guess, if it's not a good movie. All right, next up, I gotta find the other movie now. Somehow it fell out or something. Oh, there it is. All right. So in episode two, I showed you guys Ernest Scared Stupid, but it was a it was an individual copy and it was factory sealed. So I wanted to sell that one, but I hadn't seen that movie, so I was, I was holding on to it. But now that I got this three pack, I'll go ahead and flip that and keep this one. There's the other disc. Again, I've never gotten into the Ernest movie, so it's something I'm kind of looking forward to. All right, so I'm a huge basketball fan, so my favorite documentary of all time would probably be Hoop Dreams, but this is up there. This is definitely in my top five documentaries of all time. Now, this is part two of this. The, I do need to track down the first one now, but I've never seen this out in the wild before. It originally aired on HBO, so there was no physical copies of it, I don't think, in the beginning. But anyway, it's about these three boys right here. I think they were teenagers at the time. And all of a sudden, these three small children were found in the woods killed mutilated they like they they cut off their private parts i mean it was just a brutal nasty it's one of the most infamous murders in uh memphis history or arkansas history wherever this is at i think it's arkansas or memphis and um so anyway these three boys right here are kind of like the uh kind of the misfits of the town i think it's a small town they're in and, you know, they wear all black and they listen to certain kinds of music and, you know, maybe they're into Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know. But anyway, they kind of, they, they did, they stereotype these guys and, uh, 
somehow brought them in for questioning. And I can't remember if it was the one on the left or the right. I think it was this guy right here. Anyway, this guy has a, uh, a lower than, uh, a very low IQ. Like he's mentally handicapped. And I think the way the directors kind of made it look was the police did some brutal interrogation of these boys, especially that boy. And we're doing the, the things like, you know, don't you want to sleep in your bed soon? All you got to do is tell the truth. Because at first he said he had nothing to do with it. The other boy said they had nothing to do with it. And um, finally he changed. You know, they were like, do you want something to drink? Or do you want, you want to eat some food? This will all go away as soon as you admit it. And finally he admitted to it after all that coercion. And uh, they end up getting thrown in jail. They go to court. And it's one of the biggest cases, uh, murder cases ever, children murder cases. And they end up going to jail. And the second one is about... Uh, them following up with the uh, with the lawyer and um, uh, filing all these petitions and trying to get them out of jail. I'm not going to spoil it and let you know what happens, but man, this is a great documentary. Part one and two of that. All right, next up, I picked these up today as well. I did not pick up that those two half price half, half price books pickups. Those were from the other day. I don't know why I can't talk today. I can't put a sentence together. All right, next up here, The Strangers. Now, I might prefer The Second Strangers to this one, but I still think this is a spookier Strangers. But this is just a real... You have to... Going into this movie, you have to know this is a real slow burn. It does not really get started to like the 35, 40-minute mark. As long as you know that and you're good with that, it really picks up at that point and becomes really spooky. All right, next up here. The only reason I really picked this up was for this, this four film pack, uh, Return of the Living Dead 3. I always wanted to own a physical copy of that. So very happy about picking that up. And I've only watched the beginning of that, believe it or not. I'm a huge fan of the first Return of the Living Dead. This also has Return of the Living Dead Necropolis, which is one of the later releases. And Boy Eats Girl. I, th I think I've... Boy Eats Girl. I think I've heard of that before. Got bad reviews. Dead and Gone got bad reviews as well. Pretty much all these movies except for Living Dead movie got horrible reviews. There's not DVDs stacked on top of each other, which I hate. Got the little flipper in there, which is nice. All right, next up. All right, this is a very interesting, this is out of print, guys, and it's really interesting because I've never even heard of it before. Now, everybody knows Mark Hamill from the Star Wars movies. Well, those were such blockbuster hits for him. He really got typecasted, and you really didn't see him in anything even close to as big as that. I mean, he was in other movies in his career, but nothing close, as it, not even touching Star Wars. And this is no exception to the rule right here. A series that I've never even heard of, The Giver. And basically, I mean, it just looks like trash. I mean, look at that cover, man. It's just a trash movie. It got terrible reviews, but they made two of them. So it's like something had to be, had to have been good with it, right? So basically, this guy finds this suit, right? Mark Hamill finds the suit and he puts it on. He turns into this. The, the suit is made by aliens, but they don't know that at first. And it turns him into like this hybrid fighting machine superhero. So Mark Hamill does that one. He tells him, I don't want to be in the next one. And this got trash reviews. And this actually got good reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. I couldn't believe it. Giver 2. Who would have thought, right? They both look horrible, man. I can't believe Guyver 2 got good reviews. I'm going to check them out. I, there's a possibility I might sell those. I'm not just collecting any old movies, guys. I'm trying to collect a cool horror movie collection. Speaking of selling stuff, I have no interest in this. Attack of the 50-Foot Woman with Daryl Hannah. Back when Daryl Hannah was fire, man. She was so hot. Factory sealed in the snapper case. So that goes for a little bit of money. 
I've never seen that movie, so I don't know if it's good. All right, in episode two, I showed you the collection, which is part two of this. This is the collector, which is obviously part one. I don't need to open that up. There's no paperwork with it. I like that uh, movie series. I think it's good. I want to see part three. I hope that hopefully they'll make a part three to that. All right, one, if not my favorite serial killer movie of all time, Zodiac. And this is a really cool addition. Notice how it looks like a letter. And there's a reason why they did that. And you can see on the back how it says special and special is misspelled. Well, the story of Zodiac is he, he went around randomly killing people, but then he would send letters in to, I think, the local newspapers and he would taunt the police and he would misspell stuff all the time. So that's why they did that. It's really cool how they put that together. This is a David Finch, Fincher movie. Remember, David Fincher made um, the movie Seven. I think this is a masterpiece, man. I love this movie. I mean, it's weird because you know the Zodiac never got caught, but when you're watching the movie, it pulls you in so much that you're still on the edge of your seat wanting them to find out who, who actually was the Zodiac killer. It's got Robert Downey Jr. Jr. in it and uh, Mark Ruffalo. Really good acting, solid movie, man. And that's factory sealed. I can't remember if I mentioned that. And that was $2.99. All right, next up here, uh, two classics here. My Bloody Valentine, that's the original. And April Fool's Day in the double pack. And then last pickup from Goodwill, and probably my favorite pickup from Goodwill. In the steel case, we have the two disc ultimate edition of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I guess this was a dark sky films release. Very cool. The second disc has all kinds of bonus content. I think there's over 200 minutes on there, which is really badass. In case you guys don't know, it's my favorite horror movie of all time. All right, now, let's go to my eBay pickups. So in the second episode, I showed you guys part two of this series. And when I saw the Blu-ray, it's actually cheaper to get the triple feature than it was to buy the third movie. The original is a classic. I have it on Laserdisc. The second one I have on DVD I showed in the last episode. Now I have the third one, but I have them all on one Blu-ray, which is really cool. And the other cool thing about this is the Tribe got a lot of hate, got really bad reviews, but actually the Lost Boys, the third one, The Thirst, it's got, uh, Corey Feldman's only like 20 minutes in uh, the second movie, but in this one, I think he's the main protagonist. And uh, a lot of people like this one, man. They say it's a good vampire movie, so I'm excited about watching that one. All right, last pickup from eBay, guys. Now, the only reason I didn't get this on Blu-ray, and I probably should have, because it costs about the same amount of money, but the one on, at Walmart on Blu-ray is missing one film, and this has all the films. So Leprechaun 8 film edition. So I'm gonna revisit the whole Leprechaun series, kind of what I'm doing with uh, the Conjuring universe right now, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And I might even do a ranking of the Leprechaun movies. I'm really into those ranking movies. And I think I'm gonna start doing those. I might be doing those on streams though. That, that's the only difference. I might start doing so it's a long story, but to make a long story short, I'm going to start doing stream yards, but for some reason, because my DVDs nuts and popcorn channel has the same Gmail as my Mr. Tight White channel, it's being hidden on uh, stream yard. I can't access it. So I don't know what the deal is with that. So unfortunately on my video game channel, I'm probably going to have to do these streams, these horror movie discussion streams. And I might even be doing one tonight. 
So this video uploads, it's Saturday now, but if not, I'm gonna be doing them. So make sure you go, go over to my Mr. Tight White channel, that's M-R period, tight, T-I-G-H-T, uh, white, W-H-I-T-E channel, hit the notification bell and subscribe over there. Do the same on this channel, obviously, if you're not. But um, then you'll be notified of my streams. And what I'm gonna do is let different people into the stream yards so we can meet different people in the horror community. I think it'll be fun. But anyway, uh, I've definitely I have seen Leprechaun 1 before. I'm pretty sure that I saw it too. I don't think I've seen Lepre Leprechaun 4 in space. I'm not sure if I've seen 3. I know I've seen Leprechaun in the hood, but I don't remember if I've seen the whole movie. And that's supposed to be one of the best ones. Leprechaun Back to the Hood is supposed to be horrible. I don't think I've seen that. And one of the last two is supposed to be the worst in the series, I think. It's either Origins or Leprechaun Returns. I don't know which one it is, but I haven't seen either of those. So I have a lot to do. I have a lot of movies to watch in this. But yeah, I'm excited about that. All right, next up. Is this my last pickup here? Yeah, I think this is my last pickup. No, those are video games. Yep. Picked up a bunch of PS2 games, but that'll be on my Mr. Tight White channel. All right, so the last pickup, this is a Walmart pickup. So a lot of you might not know this. So you, you have the obvious movies here, Conjuring 1 and Conjuring 2. Those are the first movies that I saw. And then I saw The Nun as well. But I have not seen any of the Annabelle movies until this past week, okay? I didn't know they were part of the Conjuring universe. So all of these movies tie directly into Conjuring 1 and 2. All three of the um, Annabelle movies and The Nun. Now there's another movie that's not included on this list. There's really seven films in the, uh, in the universe. For some reason it's not on here. Maybe it was copyright issues or something of that nature, but it's called La La Rona. Now I have not seen La La Rona, so I'll be streaming that very soon, or maybe I'll buy a copy off of eBay. Um, but that's part of the universe too, but that's kind of an extended part of the universe. I think in that movie they mention the Annabelle doll, and it has the priest from one of the Annabelle movies in it. But that's all, that's all, that's the only, that's the only part of it, that's the only reason it's part of the universe, what I'm trying to say. But... I've really enjoyed watching these movies. I forgot a lot. I, I never saw any of the Annabelle movies, and I've, I've had fun with them. Uh, I rewatched The Nun. I forgot a lot about a lot about that. It gets a lot of hate, but there's a lot of there's a lot of parts of the movie that I like, enjoy a lot of aspects of it, and I forgot a lot of The Conjuring One and Two. I'm watching Conjuring Two right now. I'm halfway through it. I gotta finish watching the other half tonight. But I forgot like the first 30 minutes of it. I didn't remember hardly any of it. So that's very interesting. And uh, yeah, man, a really cool universe. But I'm going to be talking more about, I'm going to do a deep dive into this probably when I do a stream tonight or tomorrow or whenever I do my, uh, my stream yard on my Mr. Tight White channel. So I look forward to talking to you about that some more later on. All right, guys, that is it. Thank you for riding with Tight White. Thank you for checking out the Goodwill Half Price Books, eBay, Walmart, Dollar Tree pickups. And uh, yeah, that's it. All right, Leatherface, go ahead and close the door on another episode.